Hi, I'm Becky with VertiClimb and today we're going to go over how to run a report using the Report Manager in your Learn Center. After you log in, take a look at the left hand side of your screen. You're going to see a purple button called Manager View. Click on that. If you do not see this purple button, you need to speak to somebody on site to help you get that set up, whoever's leading your training and education department, and they'll get you set up. So once you click on Manager View, you're going to come to the Manager and Supervisor View page, which allows you to run reports on your direct reports and yourself. You should appear in here as well. Um, first thing you're going to see is a big question mark and VertiClimb support email. Use these if you don't understand or if this today's presentation doesn't touch on what you need. This shows you the documentation which gives a lot more detail than I'm going to be able to give in this presentation. We have to keep it short for the online streaming. And the email, you can always send us an email and someone will be happy to do a one-on-one -on -one with you, doing a screen share, WebEx, um, whatever form you need in order to get your questions answered, free of charge, so feel free to use those two resources. A few things on this screen. My team in reporting, there's something called an action bar. When you come in to run a report, I would, the first time, you want to come down to the Learn Center report. If you've already run a report and set up everything and cho chosen your fields, which we'll look at in a minute, and run a report, um, I would go to Report Manager after that first initial run. If you were happy with that report, what Report Manager does is stores the last run of your report. You can just rerun it again. We'll also take a look at that. Users. If you click on this turn arrow, it's going to collapse that. For example, if you come in here and you see this, just click on the user bar and you'll be able to see all of your direct and indirect reports. Those are the people that report to you and the people that report to the people that report to you. Yes. Um, actions. You can actually select a person. For example, I will do Jose student. And then you can see what kind of courses he has started. If you don't need to run a report, you just want to see if he started anything, has he done this. In this case, hasn't completely done, but has started one. Um, let's see, anything completed? Yes, completed quite a few. And their learning plans, again, what's, uh, maybe you forgot what was assigned to Pose, right? This is the learning plan and the course is assigned to him. So you want to get out of this view, just click on this blue hyperlink, user, and it's going to pop you back to everybody again. All right. You can also export all of this information you see on screen to a CSV or Excel. You can do that with the reports, as you'll see in a few minutes when we get into one. You can sort this primary screen by different um, fields. So you can feel free oh, popped on that. to use that. Let's get right into how to run a report. First, you want to run down to the Learn Center report. And then you will be taken to the Field Chooser interface. First thing you want to do, if you want to get a full spectrum picture of what's going on in your department, meaning your direct reports as well as those people's reports, select Include Indirect Reports. And now you can see it's populating everybody. And then you select All Users. Go to the next tab called Items, and think of items as courses. Those are just pieces of information. You're going to focus on this area here. We don't really deal with classes, instances, enrollments, assignments right now. Most users don't because courses are pretty much all of the online courses, and that's, that's, that's the normal thing. Most people just have online courses loaded. So this is the area you're going to focus on. There are a couple different items you can choose. Learning plans, which is just to run on a specific learning plan, that group of courses. Um, or skills, those are repeating annually. For example, maybe you have a sexual harassment and PPE course that runs annually. And so you can run a profile on those repeating skills. To run your basic report, select all courses. Leave learning events as it is. And then I'll scroll down and show you this. Learn centers, you're not going to have to really do anything with this because you probably don't have multiple learn centers, so you only have one. 
if you want it. If you have multiple ones you could select from, you would select them all and add or remove them as you needed to. Okay. All right. Next tab, filters. You can filter uh, dates that something was assigned or completed by any of these options. They are what they say they are. These are essentially going to get you into a calendar interface if you wanted to run something that was assigned to someone uh, on a certain date or completed. Maybe you want to see who completed everything only in August. So you select August 1st and go through it like that. I'm going to delete that and clear out that field because I don't want to do that today. Filters. Same thing. I can uh, take a selection of, let me see, maybe I just want to see for some reason who got a score of 100 and I can run that report. Uh, you can do it on any of the fields. There are plenty here to choose from. Um, I clicked on that. I apologize. Status. This is important because you normally want to keep all of these selected. You probably want to get a full range report, which is who's completed what, or are they incomplete in their courses. Exempted mean they've already tested out of it. Most people aren't classified as exempt, but check mark it, it's not going to hurt anything. And then show only mapped users. Very important that you keep this selected no matter what report you're running because this shows only the courses mapped to an individual. Otherwise it will show every available course whether it's been assigned to them or not and then it'll appear as incomplete even though that person would have never even seen that course to take so it could be misleading. All right. Last thing is output. Now, in your white paper, again, remember back to the front page of my team and reporting where we have duh, our question mark. Click on this and have this with you because what that's going to do is show you how to run this report and what fields to choose until you get comfortable with this. For example, this is sample of the documentation and these are the recommended reporting fields when you run a basic report and these are the recommended reporting fields for when you run a learning plan or skills report. Today because of time constraints we're just going to run a basic report but the the steps are pretty much the same just a couple extra ones this will walk you through that I highly recommend you looking at this documentation until you get comfortable. Okay, so in order to choose separate fields, you can click to select, and if you want to select multiple ones, you just hold down the control key on your keyboard and then click with your mouse again, and you can see it's going to allow you to select multiple fields. I'm going to make some selections and get right back to you. Okay, I've made some selections, and uh, just so you know, once you put the, uh, so the fields over here you can reorder by clicking the up and down arrows. All right. You, if you want to use the results sort order, um, it ha sometimes it has a better uh, hold factor, meaning if you rerun the same report over and over, you might want to just select the exact same fields and then reorder them here. All right. But it's not necessary to run a report. Now scroll down to your last option, which is message queue. If you check notify me when the report has completed, um, you would it's going to attach results to an email and send it to your intra system email. And if you have an email that you provided to us at Rollon, then it will also send it to that Gmail account or inner office email or something. Uh, it will not display it on the page, and um, so just so you know that. Usually I like to just have it display on page so I don't bother selecting this. Uh, I usually leave this display 500. You can go all the way up to 5000. It doesn't really matter, especially if you export it to Excel. Um, all right, then I'm going to click on Build Report. After you click Build Report, the system takes you to the uh, Reports Manager page. Okay. And you will see the arrow cycling through. Once it's uh, done cycling through, sometimes you can hit refresh uh, and it'll it'll stop. Other times it might just take a few minutes depending on how big the report is. The report is done. 
status of a check mark. So you can highlight the report you ran. You're going to see a few things. You can run report again if you wanted to. That's going to run it with the same parameters. Um, you can review the report, which is what we're going to do in a second. You can modify the report criteria. That's going to take you back to the field chooser we just stepped through with all those tabs. Copy report. It'll make a copy of it and it'll appear below here. And then you can rename the report. Uh, this might be something that you want to call monthly report because it's um, something you know you're going to like to run every month. And now it says monthly report. And if you want to get rid of it because it's something you don't want, delete. All right, so let's take a look at the binoculars here. And this is what your raw data report looks like. All right, you can see all of the fields that we chose. You can see completed, incompleted, scores, dates, how much time someone spent inside that course, what department they're in, manager name, and anything else you've chosen. Normally people export this to Excel or some CSV. So I'm going to do that. You just click View Results in Microsoft Excel. That report has automatically downloaded. I use Chrome, so uh, it's going to pop up in the, the corner here. You're going to always get some message that asks you this. Just say yes. You might have to click it a couple times, and then it pops in here. It's essentially in a CSV format. So what I do is suggest you rename this file. So save as, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit save as Excel workbook, and I'm going to call it month and just save it as the save type of Excel. Okay. Okay. You can do whatever you like with sorting your information in Excel. I've minimized that information. Um, that would be a different um, demo. But let's say you log in again next month or next week. I would just go to Report Manager, and you're going to see Monthly Report. You can rerun it again. You can view it. Um, you can also, when you're viewing it, you can hit Save Report, and it will just save that report to your Monthly Manager. And you can see that the monthly report used to have a green checkbox next to it. Now it has the saved icon, and you can just come in and view your saved report from there. Uh, if you wanted to edit this report, you would just click Edit, and like I said, it's going to take you back into the Items, Filters, Output. You might want to just reselect some of the users just to make sure it actually takes if you added new people, for example. And it takes you through the rest of that, and you can actually see that it held the output file, so you might want to just, uh, if you needed to add one more thing in there, like uh, I wanted to add in overall time spent. So you don't have to rebuild the whole thing from the start. So that is running a report in a nutshell. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click Home again, Manager View. And once you're in there, you should see all the reports you need. If you have some issues with not seeing the right people underneath you, again, you'll need to go to someone on site and have them uh, set up that person because we set up um, we set up all that stuff in the beginning when people get rolled on. So as new people are hired or maybe terminated, you may need to have those added and removed, those, those users and usernames. Again, click on question mark. Question mark's your friend. It will give you some documentation that is, uh, I'm going to scroll all the way back up, this is uh, helpful for you. It's been bookmarked. You can click on any of these. Um, anything inside of this and, and take a look at uh, how to run these reports and more. All right, so thank you so much for listening to how to run a report and I wish you well in your journeys with VertiClimb. I'm Becky. Have a great day.